Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. This podcast is going to go out late, late on Friday. It could possibly even go out on Saturday, just depending on how things shake out. I have a lot going on. First of all, I'm taking a bit of time off. I'm not going to... publish another new podcast until the fuck is today? May 30th? Is this fucking 30th already? It is May 30th. I am not going to publish another podcast, another new podcast, until probably June the 11th will probably be the next one. What I am going to do between now and then is I'm working on, I'm going to throw out some repeats. I'm going to go back to the very early days, the very 2005 when I first started doing this podcast. I did a four-part series about monogamous marriage and in which long before this whole homosexual marriage thing started, Fucking years before all the fucking whining from the GLBTLMXYZ97Z plural 41 crowd began about how homosexuals should be allowed to get married. Years before all of this happened, who was it that talked about how homosexual that homosexuals should be allowed to get married? because they own their own bodies. Oh, who was it that said that? It was me in 2005. Suck my fucking balls. This is, and this is back when I was a right-wing minarchist. I wasn't even an anarcho-capitalist yet at this time. I was a fucking right-wing minarchist and still had my head further out of my ass than you do. So who was it that said all this? Years ago, in 2005, it was me. So fuck you. Fuck you. I am so far ahead of you fucking people. You're idiots. Then the other one I'm going to repeat is my seven or is it seven? It's like seven or eight or nine some odd part series where I totally fucking destroy utilitarianism, which utilitarianism is essentially statism. Now, back when I did this, I had no clue what statism was. I had never heard of an anarcho-capitalist. I had never heard of anarchy. I had never heard of statism. So I had no idea what the fuck any of that stuff was. Looking back on it, and the interesting thing is, too, is I'll need to go back and actually listen to these. I'm going to just throw these back out. I haven't listened to them. So who knows what the fuck I'm going to say. Reminding you again, these are both, these were both, these were all within the first 15, no, first 17, 19, something. Within the first 20, I can say that with confidence. These are among the first 20 episodes of Stating the Obvious ever recorded back in the year 2005. And again, like I said, when I recorded these, I was a lot stupider than I am now. And I was not an anarcho-capitalist. I was a right-wing minarchist. So anyhow, that's going to happen. So that'll fill the space between now and then. I want to just, this is just going to be an anarchy moment. I'm going to tie up a couple of loose ends and throw some stuff out. And I'm telling you about the fact that I'm not podcasting for the next week and a half because i got a lot of shit going on. It's just going to be really fucking busy. All right. Here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, I'm getting sick of liberal Democrats, and it's not just here, it's everywhere. When the government shut down and they tried to close the national forest, here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, up at Horsetooth Reservoir, there's areas where you pull your car in and you park so you can go enjoy the reservoir and use the facilities and, you know, use this thing called the outdoors. They've put up gates on the fucking parking areas that automatically open and close when it's so when it's closing time because the outdoors closes. So when it's closing time at the reservoir, 
when the fucking reservoir, which is, a, for those of you who don't know what a reservoir is, it's a giant fucking hole in the ground full of water. When the reservoir and the surrounding grasslands and forest closes, the gates close automatically. What is it with you fucking liberals and your bizarre obsession with controlling the outdoors to the point that you think you can close a forest, that you can close a fucking reservoir, that you can fucking close the outdoors and nobody is allowed to go to the motherfucking outdoors because it's closed. People are dumb asses, dumb fucking asses. Day of the Triffids. I told you I was going to be watching the old black and white movie Day of the Triffids. So I want to correct myself. It was not a black and white movie. It was a color movie. And even though it had, it was very very loosely based on the book, it was actually not it was not that bad for a movie made back in whenever the hell it was made. I have no idea. I'm not sure. I, I'm guessing 60s, but do they have color movies in 60s? I can't remember. Of course, they must have. They must have had. Anyway, The Day of the Triffids, the old, original, American-made movie. It, it was actually better than I remembered it to be, but there were some interesting parts. And it said, the, the most interesting part was, oh, how do I condense? So there's this point where there's a couple of people who can see, and they've got a bunch of blind people in the house with them and trying to take care of them. And these prisoners who got out of a prison and can all see now because they weren't blinded by the meteor shower, they come in and they've basically taken everyone hostage and they've got guns and they're forcing the girls to dance with them. And by dance with them, of course, I mean in reality, they may having sex, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, the hero shows up and instead of shooting down all the prisoners and liberating everybody the way you would expect him to do in a movie, he grabs the little girl that he saved and befriended earlier in the movie, and he grabs the woman from the house that he's befriended, and the three of them scoot off and leave all the other people there at the mercy of the criminals with the guns. I found that interesting. I've harped on this a lot of times before, but it's on my list to harp on it again. I want to reinforce to all of you out there that what you say and what you think does not matter. The only things that matter are what you do. And you see that evil people know this. Evil people and stupid people and statist people, right? People who support the murder of people in foreign countries with flying robots. Those people know that murdering people in foreign countries with flying robots is wrong. And so that's why those people talk so much about tolerance and diversity and multiculturalism and all this other shit. And it's because those of you who are statist know the things you're doing are morally wrong and you know that you're bad people. Because of that, that is why you focus so much on what people say, not just on what you say with all of the nonsense you say about tolerance and diversity and multiculturalism, but you focus so much on what other people say and why you're so concerned with the speech codes and political correctness and free speech zones and all this other stuff. So just always, for those of you who are ANCAPs, I don't need to tell you this because you know what people think and say doesn't matter. It only matters what they do. For those of you who are considering the possibility of becoming an ANCAP, this is one of the ways you need to view the world around you in order to make the leap to anarcho-capitalism and to recognize the status around you for what they are. Listen to what people say, but then watch what they do. And when you see the conflict between what people say and what people do, remember, it's what people do that's what they really believe in. That's what they really support. It's always about what people do. It's never about what people say. What people say does not matter. It's always 
always, always about what they do. Speaking of what they do, I'm, I'm going to pause this for a minute and then I'm going to come back because i got to go get some stuff going because I am running out of time and yada, yada, yada. You don't need to hear my fucking sob stories. All right, hang on. I'm going to be right back. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. How do I pause this fucking thing? I've never paused this before. Let me try this. Anyway, I didn't pause because I have no fucking clue how to pause this thing I've never tried before. I guess I'm going to have to read the instruction manual and figure that out. Anyway, here's what I'm going to wrap this up with. is some follow-ups from the previous edition of Stating the Obvious. Or, no, actually from a previous Anarchy Moment, which was as long as a Stating the Obvious episode in which I talked about basically women whining, whining, and of course whining. Wait a minute. No, this is not a follow-up to that. This is a follow-up. This is a follow-up. God, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. Good thing I'm a professional. This is a follow-up to the Stating the Obvious where I talked about the post by Troublemaker about the birth control fertility scam and then the article I read from Elle magazine talking about paying other women to carry babies for you. I just want to throw out some ideas. This won't make any sense unless you've listened to that edition of Stating the Obvious, whatever the hell it may be. It's, the title of it is the birth control slash fertility treatment scam. I don't remember what number it is. Anyhow, first of all, if paying other women to carry a baby around for you for nine months, if this is such a wonderful thing, why is it that the people in the article had to have their names changed? Because if you read the article, it has a little notation there that says, you know, these pe the people's names have been changed, yada, yada, yada. It always fascinates me when people, you read these stories about these people who are so wonderful and so progressive and they're just such beautiful, wonderful, multicultural, talented people just exercising their rights but we have to change their names because because what because they're ashamed of the fact that they paid some woman a hundred thousand dollars or well they didn't pay the woman a hundred thousand but they're paying a large amount of money they're paying a hundred thousand dollars total to have another woman carry for nine months this woman's baby because this woman is too old and she can't carry the baby anymore and she's hit the wall and she doesn't want to stop working I mean, if that's something to be so fucking proud of, tell everybody your name. The fact that you have to hide who you are tells us you're concerned about something. Oh, but Great One, you go by the Great One himself. You don't tell us your name. Exactly. Because I am surrounded by statists who want to kill me because I'm not a statist. I do have something to hide. I do have something to fear. Because there are many of you out there, including the NSA, the CIA, and the government. There are many of you out there who want me dead. Because I believe in non-aggression, and I believe people own their own bodies. And I believe people shouldn't pay taxes. And I believe people don't need permission to get married. And I believe women should pay for their own birth control. For these reasons and many, many more, there are many of you out there who want me to die. Okay, next of all, prediction. This is a prediction. I am now officially making a prediction. Now I need to write that down to make sure I put it on the list. Within, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say within 35 years. Am I happy with that? You know what? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say within 25. Within 25 years, I predict that the feminist, the feministatist, the feminazis will assert that women have a right to fertility treatment, just as they have a right to birth control, which means they should get free birth control paid for by heterosexual white men who work for a living. Within 25 years, women, 
femistatist will assert they have a right to fertility treatment and that they have a right to have their fertility treatments paid for by heterosexual white men who work for a living. That's an official prediction. There's also a reference somewhere in the article, I think it was in the article, maybe it was somewhere else, to the book The Handmaiden's Tale, which I've never read, but my understanding is that the book is about some chick who's forced to get pregnant and have a baby for somebody else because it's this dystopian book of the future and evil Republicans are in charge. Isn't it fascinating how the Democrats are so opposed to women getting pregnant and carrying babies for other people, except, of course, when other rich, white, liberal Democrats, like the people in this story in Elle magazine, are paying women money to get pregnant and carry their babies for them. There's all these things that are evil, except when rich, white, liberal people do it. You know, like being rich. Of course, being rich is terrible because rich people are evil. Unless, of course, they're rich, liberal, white people from Hollywood. Finally, <clears throat> about the IUD thing I talked about and the fact that women, at least according to what my friend told me with here in Colorado, like I said, I don't know if this is a Fort Collins thing, a Colorado thing, a United States of America thing, I don't fucking know. But she told me about how doctors don't like to give IUDs to women unless those women have already had a baby and are in a monogamous relationship with a man. And I said, what about, where, and I said, where the hell are the femistatists on this? Where the hell are the femistatists screeching about my body, my choice, and their right to birth control? And as I pointed out, the reason femistatists don't give a shit about this is because the IUD is not the kind of birth control that femistatists believe they have a right to. The birth control femistatists have a right to is birth control pills because birth control pills make a lot of money for the pharmaceutical corporations. IUDs do not make a lot of money for pharmaceutical corporations, so that's not what the femistatists are concerned with because the femistatists are, in one facet, ultimately simply tools of the pharmaceutical corporations. But I just want to throw this out. This is just a thought for you to mull over in your head as you find out that women have to be in a monogamous relationship with a man in order to get an IUD. What if women had to be in a monogamous relationship with a man in order to get birth control pills? I mean, can you imagine the shitstorm that would rain down upon the world. The shitstorm that would be financed by the pharmaceutical corporations behind the scenes, of course. But can you imagine, can you imagine the shitstorm that would rain down if women had to be in a monogamous relationship with a man in order to exercise their right to control their own bodies by getting free birth control pills paid for by heterosexual white men who work for a living. And more importantly, what about lesbians? So what if you have two lesbians in a monogamous relationship? What, what about their right to birth control? Now you may say they don't need birth control because two women can't get each other pregnant, but see now that's sexism. You know, just because the woman is in a relationship with a woman and it's impossible for two women to get pregnant by having sex, they still have a right to birth control. Not just, then that birth control needs to be free birth control because it's a right. I'm still just stunned that my friend's theory for this was that doctors don't like giving women IUDs if they're not in a monogamous relationship because it might encourage sexual promiscuity. I, mean, I just can't even wrap my head around that. You know, the idea that having an IUD would encourage a woman to be sexually promiscuous, yet somehow or another being on the birth control pill does not encourage women to be sexually promiscuous. And I'm not saying that's the reason doctors have for doing this. I have no fucking clue what the reason is. Okay, I'm saying that was my friend's theory 
about why this was true. And I'm saying, I don't understand her theory. I, I, I don't fucking get it. But then again, it's women, and women have a right to birth control, as long as the birth control comes from pharmaceutical corporations, and as long as they don't have to pay for it. There's a lot of things about women I do not understand. All right, I'm out of here. I got shit tons of stuff to do. I will see you guys on the 11th of next month, whatever the fuck next month is. I, I don't even know. I'm buried in shit here. Just fucking buried. All right, y'all take care and enjoy the repeats. I love you all. Remember, send email, fan mail, love mail, hate mail, naked pictures, especially if you're a cute young girl that plays volleyball. Send your pictures to God's, that's dog spelled backwards, God, G-O-D at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com.